have a few books here. Okay, the first one is called Click Clack Moo, Cows That Type. Now, do you guys know of cow, uh, cows type? No. Did you ever see a cow typing? No. Well, guess what? In this book, the cow is going to be typing. I don't know what he's going to say, but he's going to type. So let's see what he says. All right, ready? Farmer Brown has a problem. His cows like to type. All day long he hears click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. Poor Farmer Brown. At first, he couldn't believe his ears. Cows that type? That's impossible. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo. Clickety clack, moo. Then he couldn't believe his ears. There was a note and it said, Dear Farmer Brown, the barn is very cold at night. We'd like some electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. It was bad enough that the cows had found the old typewriter in the barn. Now they wanted electric blankets? No way, said Farmer Brown. No electric blankets. So the cows went on strike. They left a note on the barn door. And the barn door said, sorry, we're closed. No milk today. They weren't happy, were they? No milk today, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard the cows busy at work. Click, clack, moo. Click, clack, moo. Clickety, clack, moo. The next day, he got another note. Uh-oh. Dear Farmer Brown, the hens are cold, too. They'd like electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. The cows were growing impatient with the farmer. They left a new note on the barn door. And guess what it said? Closed. No milk, no eggs. No eggs, cried Farmer Brown. And in the background, he heard them. Click, clack, moo. Click, clack, moo. Clickety, clack, moo. Cows that type? Hens on strike? Who ever heard of such a thing? How can I run a farm with no milk and no eggs? Farmer Brown was furious. He was so mad. Farmer Brown got out his own typewriter and he wrote, Dear cows and hens, there will be no electric blankets. You are cows and hens. I demand milk and eggs. Sincerely, Farmer Brown. What do you think? Think it's going to work? Duck was a neutral party, so he brought the ultimatum to the cows. See him bringing the note right over to the cows. I don't know what's going to happen. The cows held an emergency meeting. All the animals gathered around the barn to snoop, but none of them could understand Moo. All night long, Farmer Brown waited for an answer. Duck knocked on the door early the next morning, and he handed Farmer Brown a note. Dear Farmer Brown, we will exchange our typewriter for electric blankets. Leave them outside the barn door and we will send Duck over with the typewriter. Sincerely, the cows. Farmer Brown decided this was a good deal. He left the blankets next to the barn door and he waited for Duck to come with the typewriter. The next morning, he got a note. Dear Farmer Brown, the pond is quite boring. 
We'd like a diving board. Sincerely, the ducks. Click, clack, quack. Click, clack, quack. Clickety, clack, quack. And that's the end. Did you like, you think they got the diving board? They got the electric blankets, didn't they? Yep, they did. Did you like that story? Yes, I'm going to read another story. Okay, so there's Click Clack Moo, story number one. Story number two, I know you guys know this, it's one of my favorites, Boo Hoo Bird. One of your favorites? Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Bird and Raccoon were enjoying a game of catch when Bird got bonked on the head. Ouch, moaned Bird. That hurt a lot. He started to cry. Hoo, 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 hoo. Oh, no, said Raccoon. I've wounded Bird. Here, I'll kiss it better. Raccoon kissed Bird. Bird's bonk. Bird kept crying. It still hurts. It still hurts. It still hurts. I'm sorry, said Raccoon. Let's see if Rabbit can help. Raccoon told Rabbit what happened. Poor Bird, said Rabbit. Would a hug help? What do you think? Would a hug help? No. Rabbit gave Bird a hug. And Bird cried some more. It's not helping. It's not helping. Let's go find Beaver, said Rabbit. He'll know what to do. What you need is a cookie. You think that'll help? No. You can fix any problem with the cookie. So Beaver gave Bird a cookie. Bird cried louder. I think I'm getting dizzy. I'm dizzy. Let's ask Sheep what to do then, said Beaver. She's full of ideas. You think so? Well, we'll see. There might be something else. Beaver showed Bird's boo-boo to Sheep. How about a game of hide and seek, suggested oh, Sheep. that's really hard. The animals ran and hid. You want me to hide, wailed Bird? I can hardly walk. Surely Fox can make you better, said Sheep. Fox is very clever. Bird got bonked on the head, Sheep told Fox, and he's quite upset. What you need is a Band-Aid. He disappeared into the den and came back. Band-Aids always make my boo-boos feel better. Fox put the Band-Aid on Bird's head. The Band-Aid isn't working, boo cried Bird. It's not working. boo cried Bird's friends. They were all crying together. Nothing is making Bird feel better. Bird looked at his friends and he felt his bonk. It didn't really hurt anymore. I think I'm okay now, he said, but his friends couldn't hear him. I said, I'm all better now. Oh. <laughs> See? Bird stood on his head. Is he trying to make them laugh? You're so silly, bird, said the animals. They laughed, and they stood on their heads, too. Come on, said bird. Let's play catch. And that is the end. But guess what happens again? What's going to happen? Uh-oh, you think he's going to get bonked? I think he's going to get bonked again, and what's he going to do? Cry. Uh, it looks like it's headed for that way, but he's going to be doing a lot of crying, I think. Right. Okay, story number five. Seven, two, three.
Yeah. Wait a minute. This was? This is? Okay. Now, oh, you're not crying like bird. No. Okay. Story number two, and I know you guys love Pete the Cat. All right. Are you ready for Pete? Okay. Ready? I love my white shoes. Pete the cat was walking down the street in his brand new white shoes. Pete loved his white shoes so much he sang this song. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Oh no! Pete stepped in a large pile of strawberries. What color did it turn his shoes? Red. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna close my eyes. Tell me if it's red. Red. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. He kept walking along and singing his song, and he said, everything is cool. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. Oh, no. Pete stepped in a large pile of blueberries. <coughs> what color did it turn his shoes? Blue. Are you sure? Yeah. Tell me if it's really blue. 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 Did Pete cry? No. Goodness, no. He kept walking along and singing his song. And you know what he says? Awesome. <laughs> I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. Oh, no. Pete stepped in a large puddle of mud. What color did it turn his shoes? Yeah. Is it brown? Brown. Do we like them brown? Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. He kept walking along and Singing his song. You know what he says now? Groovy. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. Oh, 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 no. Pete stepped in a bucket of water. And all the brown and all the blue and all the red was washed away. What color were her sh his shoes again? White. White, but now they are wet. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. He kept walking along and singing his song. And he said, rock and roll. Rock and roll. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. The moral of Pete's story is, no matter what you step in, keep walking along and singing your song. Where's the rainbow? What were your favorite color sneakers? Everybody like the red? Because guess why? It's all good. My favorite color ones are? How did you guess? I like, I love his white shoes. Yeah. Okay, what story is this? We have one more story. This is story number? Three. Three. Okay. Story number four. I know you don't know this story. It's called Little Louie the Baby Bloomer. No, you don't? 
You read this one? All right. All right. Little look. Look it. So many people have read this story. It's falling apart. It's all ripped, but it's a nice story. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Leo's little brother, Louie, couldn't do anything right. No, he couldn't do anything right. He couldn't throw a ball. Look at he did. Look, it hits him on the head. He couldn't pull a wagon. What's he doing? Oh, he tripped. He fell down. The wagon <laughs> fell on top of him. He, could, he couldn't even rattle his rattle. Look, he spun all around. <laughs> He's My silly. Tornado. I know. He was a messy eater. Look at him. He's full of food. <laughs> and guess what? He never said a word. See? He doesn't talk. Every day, Leo played with his friends. And every day, he tried to play with little Louie, too. What's the matter with little Louie, said Plover. Why can't he throw a ball, said Elephant. Why can't he pull a wagon, asked Crocodile. Why can't he rattle his rattle, asked Snake. And he can't talk either, said Leo. He looks sad up in the tree, doesn't he, all by himself. Leo was worried. Why won't little Louie play with me, he asked. Little Louie will play with you in his own good time, said Leo's father. And in his own good way, said Leo's mother. He's a late bloomer, just like you. So Leo stopped trying to play with little Louie and decided to teach Louie instead. Every day, he showed him how to throw a ball. And every night, he showed him how to pull a wagon. Look, he's falling down there. But he showed Louie how to rattle his rattle, and he started to teach him how to say his name. L-E plus O equals Leo. Leo. Leo, Leo. <laughs> Leo decided not to teach little Louie how to eat. Look at what little Louie does. <laughs> He makes a big mess, doesn't he? Yeah. Are you sure little Louie is a bloomer? Leo asked his parents. Patience, said his mother. Patience. A watched bloomer doesn't bloom, said his father. And look, what, look at him in the tree, just sitting around. Do you think he's going to bloom? Yeah. yeah. Then, one day, Leo got it. Little Louie had bloomed already. He could throw. He could pull. He could rattle. He could even eat neatly. He just did it all in his own good way. See him pulling the wagon? Look, the rattle's on his tail, and he's eating spaghetti all at one time. The next time Leo's friends came over, Leo said, Little Louie made it, just like you, said Plover. A late bloomer, said Crocodile. A baby bloomer, Leo said, except he still doesn't talk. Leo, said Little Louie. And that's the end. So did he talk? Yeah. yeah. OK, so those are our four stories for the day. Um, should I read one more? Yeah, go for it. I mean, I don't have one. You want to, whatever you want to do. Um, let me see. I'll see if I can, let's see. Well, I'm trying to get one very close. <laughs> let's see what, where is Tippy Toes? Let's see, where is Tippy Toes? We'll see if this is a good one. Okay. Where is Tippy Toes? Obviously, you think that's Tippy Toes? Yeah. I think so. 
Okay. Let's see. Everyone knows where Tippy Toes is. When the sun is up and the day is his. The mouse in his hole knows the soft pit pat. Uh-oh. Something's coming. What do you think? Something of tippy toe steps on his welcome mat. The cat's trying to get the mouse, but nobody knows where tippy toes goes. Look at the eyes. Spo are, you, are you frightened? Whoa! When the night is alight with firefly shows. Everyone knows. Where tippy toes goes. I think he likes that hose. To escape the squirt of the garden hose. Look, he's running from the water. I don't, cats don't like water too much. And everyone knows that purring snore. When tippy toes naps in a dresser drawer. Look, he's sleeping with clothes, somebody's clothes. And everyone knows, but they don't know why, he tippy-toed through the blueberry pie. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right through the blueberry pie and look at his footprints, paw prints. But nobody knows where tippy-toes goes. When the moon is full and the night wind blows, does wise owl know, do you suppose? Do you think owl knows where he goes? He might. Nope. Nobody knows where tippy toes creeps when darkness falls and the whole world sleeps. Except me. And where is he? He's in bed with his owner. his owner, right. So he knows where he goes. All right, so that thought, that's our stories for today. That was five stories. Do we want to sing Pearly Shells before yeah. you go? Yeah. 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 Always Pearly yeah. Shell. Yeah. Do you want to, do you want to yeah. sing it to the camera? Yeah. All right, turn around. We're going to have to make this our ending song. Ready? Pearly shells, pearly shells, from the ocean, from the ocean, shining in the sun, shining in the sun, covering the shore, covering the shore. When I see them, when I see them, my heart tells me that I love you more than all those little pearly shells, pearly shells. Okay, say hi to your mom and dad. And that's the end. Ha, ha, ha.